We're back. We're back. We're yes. talking about our favorite, favorite thing. <laughs> if you like it, then you should have put a. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I think you like this for us. Uh, um, mm, mm, mm. We're talking about marriage and what is its purpose today in today's society. Um, and I just think the second question was basically what was its purpose back in the day? So anyone want to just dive into that and talk about what they understand? All right. So from my experience, uh, back in the day, marriage was like you had to get married out of necessity. So whether if it was like you're really rich or you're really powerful, it's the, you know, you know, bring your kingdoms together or whether it's, you know, stopping beef from like between kingdoms or even like I know over here in the United States, a lot of times it was like when it was like a lot of farmland and stuff, you got married so you could have kids so you could, you know, raise the farm and stuff. Nowadays, I mean, marriage is what you make it. I see marriages being as business partners. I see marriage as as, hey, I'm in love with this person and I see marriage as, you know, hey, I really like this person right now. Let me get married. Let me marry you. Then a year later, hey, let's go ahead and call it off. It ain't what it is. <laughs> what have you guys seen? I suppose if you, if you take into consideration that um, living in the world we live in, that is, that is completely patriarchal, it was necessary for women to get married just for the law to recognize them as full humans, just for them to access property, for them to own things. Yes. Uh, so, so I suppose that was a huge part of it back then. Mm -hmm. But also something that we still see today is, I've never seen a president, well, you don't see them often, who just has a girlfriend, you know? Who just has a girlfriend, a girl he's talking to. Actually. Or, or any public official. Our previous president had a girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> Why he had wives. Just saying. And four Why? wives. And yeah. four wives. But, yeah. but, but you hardly see a public official who just has, guys, hi, I'm your new president. Thank you for your votes. This is the girl I'm talking to it goes back to society's rules on what actually makes you capable you have to be a family oriented person exactly 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 and the same is true for the church setup mm -hmm. uh, I, I i haven't seen a leader of a church who this is my girlfriend or you know what right now i'm in between relationships and that also says a lot about us as a society and how we view people. We think we're really progressive today, but I don't think a, a single president or a single pastor would be palatable or yeah. would be seen as stable. What? Like what, what is it about us that we think that a person who's decided to take on a life commitment is more responsible? I mean, a tattoo is a life commitment. I'm responsible. Hey, now. So... This is true. This is true. I just think it just shows like he's got his shit together. He's more stable. If he's a single man, then he's more likely running these streets and running through many different women and stuff. But if you're but that's perception, that, but that's not the reality, is it? But but so I'm in the military. So I'm in I'm in the military, and one thing and they always preach to us in the military is, is perception is reality. So just because it's and so, I mean, just look at how social media is now, where you see like a lot of couples, they look like they're the best couple in the world, like on social media exactly. and stuff. But if you go to their house, they sleep in a separate room. <laughs> and stuff. True, true. Noma, you wanted to add? Yeah. Um, I'm actually just thinking about the comparison in different sporting codes. Right. So when you look at more of rugby players, they seem to marry younger and much quicker into their career. So I think the perception around being married and especially as you are progressing within your career kind of takes you on a path of being a bit more focused in your career, right? Versus let's say for example, soccer players who are more synonymous with just getting around and there isn't much of that discipline that is in there. So I think 
the part of an assumed discipline and or rather even a forced discipline that gets you into you a married man you need to be financially responsible you have to think of something outside of yourself that would be the one thing right but just to go back to the original question um i think just historically most of us can probably agree with what chris actually started off with is to say it was largely for economics it was largely for social coercion i mean um, cohesiveness Mm -hmm. And it was mainly for, I know, in Roman times, you know, it was the most senior ranking officers that could actually be married and have women because their status in society deemed them a bit more capable to do it. So again, access, yes, there is that. What does it mean today? For me, honestly, I do not know, but I do question its relevance given the fact that I am of the personal opinion that of the reasons of why most of our parents got into marriage are very different to why we would also get into marriage in these um, day and times, right? Yeah. And the yeah. other thing, so for me personally, I'm very cautious of marriage simply because from where I'm standing, I don't think a lot of people have really or delved enough into the reason of why they are getting married. The reason it's meaningless until I marry you. Why is that? I can still leave you after marriage. But you asked me have to go still... through a shitload of trouble before that happens. And mm. and and that's yeah. fine. Yeah, but and that's but, fine. Yeah. But, but that's precisely that's precisely the problem I have as a man with marriage, because what you're talking about, Marika, is something I hear from women all the time. So you you want me to marry you. So, so that you can imprison me. So you can make it harder that, for that, me to leave you. Yeah, that's what I think some women are looking at right now. It's just to yeah, make because sure then how that if you are going to stay, marriage, you stay. It makes marriage less attractive to me because Men. all you're doing is, I just want to make it harder for you to leave me. It, so that's it's, think... it's peak insecure. It, 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 that's an, it, it's such an insecure stance that, okay, we're not gonna try and keep this relationship healthy and keep it going because we both want to be in it. We have to choose each other daily. But when you want to involve the government just so, it's harder for me to leave. Nothing about that institution is attractive to me. Well, that's one aspect of looking at it, right? And there's the other aspect of, of society, right? Society yeah. doesn't look at a dating couple as a serious couple, right? They're, they're, they're just people who are living together. So what, what was it my grandmother used to say? Why would a man buy the milk if he's getting the cow for free? <laughs> for free. Girl, yes. Your yeah. grandmother, uh, so enough, grew up in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that is yep. a thing we all say. Yeah, so like it's all down to if you're going to be a responsible adult, you need to be taking the next step and getting into marriage. Yeah. Then children. No. Yes, ma. Also, I just want to say that's not my stance on yes, as marriage. You said, women generally. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm pro perspective. It's all a matter of perspective for me. Yes, it is. Oh, and then, she said, and then she said that um, her grandmother. <laughs> What your grandmama say? <laughs> she she it, said. It's literally every grandmother who who speaks that way, though. <laughs> I just want to know that <laughs> he's heard this. So she said, "Why would a man buy the milk if he's gonna get the cow for free?" I mean, my grandma said the same thing. So okay, then. Yeah. Okay. So when <laughs> that's, that's, that's all right. So here's oh, all right, so, so there, I would like to say that there is a perception that. All right, so at the end of the day, humans are here so we can create more humans and stuff, right? And so society nowadays dictates that, you know, a husband and a wife have kids and stuff. And so I definitely feel like there is a pressure for women to get married, especially by like a certain age. And they got to have kids by a certain age. And if they don't, then they seem like they are a failure. And so... And they don't respect you. Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> 
Now, I would like to say this, like I'm a firm believer in marriage. I'm a firm believer that iron shot friends iron. And so your perfect partner is somebody that's going to make you a better person. And so I was married. I'm separated now. And I would definitely see myself getting married again if I meet the mm -hmm. right person. But at the same time, but that's the very key thing is you have to meet the right person. And like I've seen a lot of times where um, a lot of women, they choose guys because they looking for stability. And so they want to choose the best person that's going to be that's going to be stay, uh, that's going to keep them stable or uh, provide them a stable yeah. lifestyle. And not necessarily somebody they even love. But now here's the thing. Uh, every single thing I've heard men mentioned as a positive about marriage can exist outside of marriage. We can make babies outside of a marriage. We do. We that. have love outside of a marriage. We can have stability outside of a marriage. True. We can live in a pretty house in the neighborhood that we love, near the schools that we like, but outside of you, a marriage. But what you don't have, though, is that legal. So anything, marriage is nothing but a legal document saying that these two people are one. And but so we did if speak you about had that, that when you document, were. Mm -hmm. And so. If, I decided to leave out of here if I that legal document I could leave out of there and leave the woman and the woman don't have anything why but, does she have anything it's 2020 what is she doing say what mm -hmm. why does why she, she have she anything depends on what kind of, it, it, don't it she have a job kind of you, a career it depends on what kind of woman you choose I know me personally I love a career driven woman I, I'm trying to build a mini empire and so I definitely want my woman to be out, out in these streets making that money right along with me I, I stay at home mom that's going to take care of the house exactly. that's nothing for me but that's just me a lot I know a lot of people they that's what they prefer they they want a docile woman from like back in the 1950s and do nothing <laughs> but be pregnant in the kitchen and stuff hey that's good for them that's not for me though okay guys wait i need to direct this conversation outside of this because i think we're answering a lot of these questions um sporadically so who has more at stake going into marriage whoever got the most to lose how Personally, right now it should be both it should be both partners it shouldn't be a male or a female perspective it should be both partners have a lot to lose if they leave but if you it's are a, it's, it's not, it's, if if you are saying? a me, basic baby, and you are marrying billionaire, do I have more to lose? Really? Do I? What's your, what is your Absolutely intention for getting into the marriage in the first place? Sorry. Mm. Doesn't it come down to intent? Like, what is your intention of getting into the marriage in the first place? Was it for? Well, no, it doesn't. It comes Part down to what happens at court when you divorce. That's what it comes down to. Mm. Norma, sorry, you have your hand up. I, I, I actually agree with Marika on this one. The uh -huh. intention as into the marriage, right? So when you get married, that is not the point of the way you leave yourself behind, you stop your self-development, because even with you bearing kids for that man, there needs to be something that then can substantiate who you are as a human being. That's one. Mm -hmm. I think the other part is sorry, sorry. Why please, they please explain to me what, what do you mean by if I bear kids, there must be something that can substantiate. What what does that mean? I don't understand that. Yeah. So so see, so here's the thing. So when you are getting married, the value that you bring into a marriage, right? When you're marrying young, what are you giving up? Your use. Yes. That's what you, you, you need to trade marriage for. You want to trade your, your youth for marriage. And when you uh, have children, you are trading your sense of selfishness for the benefit of your children, yes, and your body and all of these other things, right? But you get people who get married and look at the pinnacle of marriage as I miss somebody and I have kids. You take that away, including the marriage, there is absolutely nothing. Where the person hasn't discovered who they are, they don't even know what interests them and why they are even here on earth. And that, with respect, is a, is a huge journey. Also, the resentment has to do with I've lost or I've wasted time with this person. So for me, the question would be, if you are coming into a relationship with a billionaire, if he's proposing marriage, why is he proposing marriage? Does it make sense for the two of you to be married Okay, um, so 
both of us have things to lose, but the question is who has more at stake? Jabulo? Um, we don't even have to discuss the, 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 hyper, the hypothetical billionaire versus the poor girl who's just bringing her womb. But, 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 but also um, a phrase that, that Noma brought up and, and, and this is not a direct response to you or, or, or to assume that this is your stance, but you hear this a lot where women talk about, I'm giving this man children. Why are you in, in 2020 or 2010 or 2015? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you giving somebody children? Why aren't you as a couple having children together? What is this idea that you are carrying human beings in your body to give to me? We are, are we not building a family you and me together? Do you understand? So, yeah. so this idea, this, 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 this idea as well of, of commodifying your uterus in exchange for a marital contract that might have uh, financial benefits down the line if I, if I choose to leave you. That's also something that we have to deal with. We, we, we have to own our actions and do things for ourselves and then find each other in the middle where our interests align. Would you like babies, OJ? Yes, I would like babies. Hey, I would like babies too, and I love you. Let's make babies together. You're not giving me children. We're making a family together and we're building something together. Um, and another thing for me, I have, I have no reverence for the institution of marriage. I have no reverence for the institution of marriage here comes the bride, blah, 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 blah. Or we do it traditionally, whether it's Ilobolo and all of that. I have no reverence for that institution. What I have reverence for is I love this person. I want to spend the rest of my life with them. And I don't need a contract to prove that. And I can also sign a contract with you and not, and not respect you and not be in anything meaningful with you. It's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. But I'll say this. I will happily walk down the aisle and wear the prettiest suit that you want me to wear. If you're my woman and you're saying that you don't feel secure in this relationship unless, unless it's, it's, it's in that format. But that institution in and of itself has zero, has, has zero meaningfulness for me. And when I'm unhappy and I feel like the relationship isn't working, I will leave no matter how difficult the legal ramifications are. Take all of it, take everything, I'll start afresh, but I can't stay in a relationship where I feel like I am, I am emotionally and physically eroded daily just to keep this marriage going and because, oh, now it's harder to leave because we entered into this contract. So what I value is, so what I value is love and commitment and all those things exist outside this institution of marriage. Rings, even our rings, if you look at a man's ring and you're like, what, what is this? What can, just buy me a t-shirt or something. What the hell is this thing? <laughs> this, is, this is a woman's ring, which is like, flat out. <laughs> All right, so I think at the end of the day, when it comes to marriage, it's all about what you, what did marriage mean to you? Um, I know from like my personal experience, I met a lot of people that all marriage was, was just a business contract. Did it benefit you both know? parties if it was a business contract? So like if you marry like mill to mill, yeah, it is because you get more money. When you get or divorced like, or when, when do you get this money? I mean, as soon as uh, you get married, then like you'll sign some paperwork and then like your next paycheck, you get more money. So like a or, wife allowance? Say what? Like a wife allowance? I mean, I guess if, if you want to call it that, it all depends on what your prenup says. And then uh, <laughs> it depends. If you like, have a prenup. Yeah. I know it's depending on, like, I know over here, depending on certain states, you know, your wife is guaranteed half regardless of if there's a prenup or not. Damn. That's, that's harsh. 
That's harsh. And so, but does like, it work both not, ways? But I does just feel like, like, me, like with me being in the military, like I see, I met because my aunts, because I I'm, I'm from like, so my aunts they taught me the game because they were go diggers. I'm not gonna lie to you, and so they will purposely look for like military. They will purposely look for like military dudes because that's free health. You know, that's free health care. That's a guaranteed check. That's a guaranteed place to stay. And then yeah. if you stay married to him for like 10 years, you get half of his retirement. Wait, so that's a check you get for the rest of your life. If you get married to him for 10 years, what if you divorce after year 10? You're guaranteed. It don't matter. Guarantee half of his retirement. So if he divorced, okay, so if we get married 10 years yeah. in, we divorce, and then you marry Marika, and Marika's 10 years in, and you get divorced. Do me and Marika get 50, 25, 25? No, the first wife. The, the first wife gets it. Oh, so I win. Okay, cool. Yeah. So just like I learned this too, because my grandma taught me this one right here. And so when my granddaddy died, he was already married to like another woman for like 20 years and stuff. But as soon as he died, my grandma went to the social security oh. office and got his social security check. Because she was the first wife. Mm -hmm. Opens up the door to my next yeah. question. Do this is how I had phrased it and said, do women get married for love or security? But do people get married for love and security? At my age, what I'm starting to realize is that I meet a lot of women. I, I meet a lot of women now, like they're in their thirties and they feel like they got to hit that hump. Like, hey, I got to find somebody that's going to marry me or take care of me. Or if they have kids, I need to find somebody that's going to take care of my kids and stuff. And so I got to be extra careful that I don't beat somebody that's trying to trap me like that. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Well, for me, yeah. For me, it's it's for it's for love. If in at my age, I'm pretty secure in my career right now. I'm happy with what's going on. I, I'm independent. I can take care of myself. So I don't need anybody to come in and take care of me Same. for security reasons. I've secured myself. Yeah, I'm safe. I'd love to hear that. But. <laughs> It has to be love. I mean, I got to learn from previous mistakes. It has to be love. What What are your What is What do you see in your society though? Like in in your community, your cousins, your aunts, your whoever. Why do they get married? Or why didn't they? Get married? By twenty one, society looked at you as you needed to be married. So they got married. They looked at their mom. Their mom got married at twenty one. So cousins would get married at twenty one or twenty two, and you'd have to be dating for a certain period of time before you got married. And if you weren't, you were like looked at as the weird one, no matter what else you had going on for you, whether it was your studies, whether it was your career, it, you just needed to have that to be accepted, you know, as somebody who got their shit together. Jabulo likes it was a respectability politics. As a full human being. Yeah. Noms, you have a thought on this? Um, Very cool. Yeah, I think some, most people thought they were marrying for love. Then they realized that security becomes more important because they did not ensure that security was in place. And I say this because I've observed that people go into great amount of debt for the wedding day. Mm. But don't that the world of marriage or what you may deem as a married situation has more of a demand on your softer things, your, 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 your sense of just, you need to have tenacity, if anything. Um, and they just realize that that's not it. But I think for me, it would, if, it, for person, if I were to get married personally, it would need to be for love. Security doesn't hurt, but it won't be with, you know, that being my sole plan. Why do women, <laughs> uh, to, like what I've seen, women put pressure on men to get married? I don't know. Maybe you guys have seen men putting pressure on women to get married. Um, but why does this happen? I don't understand it. Okay. I think I've, I've, definitely, I've definitely been on the receiving end of that pressure twice. And, how long? How long were those relationships? And, and, and women. Oh, first relationship was with the the mother of my my only child that I know of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we've been together for ten years, 
But um, that relationship started when we were in high school. We were 15 when we got together. So it's not like we, it's not like it's 10 years and we met and we were adults. We were kids when we met. We were, we were 15 when we met. The second and then in our mid twenties, the Hello, second relationship, it was two years, it was two years old. And you were it was asked- two years old. Yeah, like where is this going? Where I'm like, what do you mean where this is going? I love you, you love me. I see a Wait. future with you. Wait, how old was she? Oh, second relationship. Second one. Second one, twenty-four. First one, she was. We were both twenty-five. Hmm. It's quite it's quite weird to have a twenty-four-year-old uh, kind of talking marriage, but because with most women. From 26 going up, that's when you get married. From 26, it starts becoming, what are we doing? Who are we? Where is this mm. going? Um, so I think, I think I don't know, maybe Marix can back me up here. There's uh, different people. So depends where, has, uh, her, where she grew up and what her societal pressures are. You still have women that are much younger who want to get married much younger because of the pressure they face in their spaces. Unlike some of us who really give zero facts about these things. Um, Would that be coming from their parents asking them when they're getting married? Or parents, friends, friends asking? aunts, grandmothers, everybody. Strangers. So you could be 26 and all your siblings have kids. And then all you ever hear at family gatherings is, when are you giving us kids? and all your siblings are married or engaged or whatever, mm. suddenly the only question they ask you is, what's going on with you? As if you're a leper or you have a disease. And if only they knew the amount of fun you'd be having at that time. Being single <laughs> and childrenless and hey, bro, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so then it brings me to my question then, in terms, well, in regards to this about putting pressure on a, mm-hmm. on a guy. What type of relationships, or okay, maybe I should rephrase this. What type of conversations do you have at the beginning of your relationship when you guys are determining what you'll want for the future or what you want out of this relationship? Usually that conversation doesn't come up up until three years, four years into the relationship. Well, from my experience, it's, it's been like that. Like two years, we're still getting to know each other. I do not know you at two years. I do not know what takes you. I do not know. I only know what turns you on, and that's not enough. <laughs> and, so. and, and, and it's a very different thing as well to have a discussion at the beginning of a relationship as people on both sides that, hey, I would like to get married one day. But then there's also another thing where by the time a woman is bringing this up, they're willing to give the they're willing to throw the relationship away if they don't get the marriage out of it which is very strange because also there's a financial outlay that's expected from us that's not expected from you as a woman you can sit there and say i want to be married and you don't have a dime in your bank account to book a venue to put down on a property to, to put down on, on food for, for, for the guests that are coming to the wedding, but you have all these ideas of what this wedding must look like. So there's this huge financial outlay that's required for the party. And that's what a wedding is. It's a party, one day, one weekend, that might, have, that might put us in debt and put our, our, our marriage and relationship on the back foot for the next years to come. And then I'm an African man. So I don't buy a ring and get down on one knee and say, will you marry me? And that's the beginning of it. And then we set a date and we buy booze, we're pretty dressed, we wear suits and we get married. There's a whole year of things that must happen, which all cost money, but you can sit there and say, why haven't you married me? And in my head, I'm making these calculations and I'm thinking, where am I finding these hundreds of thousands of rands to do this? even Mm -hmm. though when I I have the desire to do, and you sitting there with plans of what your dress must must look like 
and you're making a demand on what you want. And I'm thinking to myself, where is this supposed to come from? Yeah. And then you factor in social economic factors like same Africans who get married in this very expensive way are the same group of people who have 64% poverty. And then you have black women sitting there, but you are not serious about me. You haven't married me. And not only do I want a white wedding, not so I want a traditional wedding too. So I can invite the whole street. The, it's, the, the traditional wedding is not even negotiable. And the white wedding is not negotiable either. So, and, and then we still have to live somewhere. The kids still need to go to school. And all of these things, when we break them down, come down to rands and cents, not feelings and desires, but money. And more often than not, no matter how modern she is, no matter how progressive this is, she's sitting there waiting for that money, for these things to move, to come from me. And mostly me, if not only me, and she gets to show up and be pretty. Because you're the provider. Noma, you have a thought? Yeah. So I just really think that the considerations. So I really do not, I'm not judging. I'm not judging a girl. In fact, I have far more respect for a girl that comes into a relationship and states that I'm not going to be dating for two years. And there's no way of us actually figuring out where are we actually going? Then on the other side, I really think that, or let me just, I question. I really question the point of getting into relationships and there is no maturity that's shown or proven. And for both sides, male and female, to then go, how is the conversation shifting from when we were 18 and then we're saying we're not going to get married um, at 20. We do have to unlearn some things when it comes to how we as women are also socialized and the views that we have on marriage. It is not the goal. So if that does not exist, what then? Yeah, because today's society has made marriage a destination now. And, not, and now we're shifting away from yeah. focusing on the fact that a relationship with someone any type of relationship is that journey of you taking a part of your life to share your time, energy, and experiences with that person. And it should be mm -hmm. about the journey and not about this destination. Because mm -hmm. in any relationship, what you want yeah. at 15, what you want at 30, what you want at 40 will change. But it's about both of us going through those changes together. But like, but now we have all this pressure of, okay, but we started dating at 15 and now we're at 35. Where are we going? We are going where we were going all along. We're going together. That's, that's it. No, so I think sometimes you do need to define those things. Because yeah, I think that's what Marika was alluding to. Yeah, earlier, saying. Define it because if you fail to define it, then there is no going in. Uh, Marika, you had a thought? And so like, just going back to what Anjab says about being the financier of all of the wedding aspirations, marital aspirations, it's, it ties into what Noma was saying in terms of we need to question ourselves and see if we can bring what we want to the party as well. It needs to be a partnership. It's not, it falls on the other person. That's not just their responsibility. If it's a marriage, it's both our responsibilities to participate, provide, be there for each other. It shouldn't just be a one-way street. That's yeah. why it goes the conversation. The conversations need to happen about what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. You need to already by at some point know what plan you have for your life. And the other person needs to know what plan they have for their life. And if it actually dovetails at some point, and if you guys can grow together, not just look at society's way of looking at things, Bollywood, Nollywood, Hollywood, mm. and <laughs> put yourself into that box and say that this is how life is supposed to be. And this is what I need to be focusing on. Because that's not necessarily what's gonna work for you as an individual. You, it won't fit exactly. your personality, then what? Does the world come to an end? Does life come to an end? So you need to have your shit together instead of in, in terms of knowing yourself and what you want out of life. 
Cool. Lucky, you but, have but should, sh shouldn't the, you know, uh, either Marika or Njabulu mentioned that why is marriage a destination? That was me. That was all me. Or was that you? So basically, why must it be the final destination of where things should be? Shouldn't yeah. me and you being together, understanding each other, be enough for either one of us to be on a point where we are happy with each other? And should the marriage uh, thing come up, it shouldn't be one-sided because we should be at a point where we know each other. We are together in this relationship, but when marriage comes up, it shouldn't be a one-sided thing, but a two-sided thing. As soon as you say to a woman, sorry to generalize, but as soon as you say, yes, we are going to get married to a woman, her expectations is we are going to get married in a year or two. But my expectation could be uh, we are going to get married when we are both ready. Yeah. And should you be ready before me, then you have to wait for me to be ready. And should I be ready and we've spent all this time waiting for me to be ready and we get to a point where you are not ready, then we are both not ready because we are the, both of us are the ones that are doing this thing. And should either one of us not be ready, it, it's going to cause a problem in the long run. Yeah. It's called resentment. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. I think part of the the pressure, and this yeah. is me wanting to sympathize with, with, with the, the, the female perspective on this. Yeah. I know the fact that for some women, they completely treat wife and girlfriend as two separate personalities. Each one can mm privileges right so there are girls who will tell you that for example i will not move in with you and come and stay with you um and i'm talking grown people you know over 26 going i can't come and stay with you because it is something that is shunned upon in my family so in order for me to come and stay with you we may be dating and we're doing everything else but to make it official i we have to get married Women where, as far as they are still kept in the girlfriend state, will not extend themselves to a point of making sure your clothes are ironed and you look good before you go out, even if it's for a job interview. I don't play on doing your laundry. I don't play in making sure that, you know, there's any other thing that can tie me to you emotionally. So the less I also give in that, and I don't play into the view being wifey then that's the cue to know that in order to get those things you would then need to marry me so I think part of it is actually it speaks to that pressure because that's the condition yeah um, if you want from me then you have to marry me yeah therefore it's, it's, the, mm. it's the milk and cow scenario it's the milk and cow yeah scenario. that's it, it, the benefit package mm. you get upgraded it's yeah, it's it's very it's very interesting what you just uh, brought up, Norma, and 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 of course I've I've heard this as 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 a guy I've heard this from from certain women, and from those very same women who create that and and it's a false standard that well a girlfriend has these responsibilities and a wife has these responsibilities. It's completely fictional. Right. Those same women will happily will happily expect money from you as a boyfriend. And if you if you throw it back in, in their faces and say, those are husband responsibilities, I'm not your husband, I'm not giving you money. And then it's a problem. Because yeah. if you're leveraging, if you're leveraging, um, if you're leveraging just thoughtfulness, uh, and 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 I, and I don't expect a woman to iron my clothes, whether she's my wife or not. I don't like like those are basic things that can be helpful. I, I could iron your clothes as as my wife because 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 you're getting ready for work and I happen my day happens to be starting later than yours and I can see you could see okay this person needs to get to work at a specific time blah 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 whatever but those same women when you tell them 
but why do you expect money from me on a regular basis? Why do you expect me to pay your bills when you say, I can't do X, Y, Z for you because you haven't married me? And then suddenly there's, ah, but, ah, but it's different. It's not different. It's, you can't be leveraging your, your kindness, your affection, your sex, or how you treat me uh, 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 against, against title. you haven't put a ring on it, but at the same time, you want me to be your entire world. You want me to provide for you without any limits to prove that I, I, I'm a worthy, I'm worthy husband material. So, mm. so I always find those, those, uh, those things, those standards completely farcical. Like it's, it's either we are living our lives together and we're loving each other uh, to the fullest extent or we're not. There's always gonna be an element of risk. And I also think a lot of people <laughs> like to like the idea of marriage because it, somehow it reduces the risk of being hurt, the risk of heartbreak, the risk of this mm. might go badly. Love, life in general has risk and happiness and sadness enter through the same door. So you are either vulnerable enough to be happy as shit or you aren't. I can't ever hear men say to a woman when they enter a relationship, promise you'll never hurt me. I've never said that to a woman in my life when I enter a relationship. And I'm sure, I'm sure fellas have said that, but in every relationship I've been with, with a woman, I hear that, promise you'll never hurt me. I can't make that promise. And it's an unreasonable thing to ask any human being. So I want to discuss the, I think you guys went into this, the roles and expectations in, in a marriage. And I, and I brought up the sexual as expectations because of that video that I shared with you guys where the husband was saying that he felt pressured by his now wife to get married. And now they are older and they have grown and you know how women and men peak at sex different times sexually. And now he's at a place where he wants sex more frequently. And she's just like, bruv, bruv, bruv. And this speaks to what Noma was talking about earlier, saying that- Oh, oh I think he's always wanted sex frequently. No, okay, well, sure. I agree, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But he's, he's- I think he's, he's saying, always wanted sex all the time. Yes, but what he's saying is he's in a different place physically and sexually as a man, and he wants it more frequently, and she yeah. is. So what, what this reminds me of was that Noma was saying earlier, talking about how women believe there's a difference in the role of girlfriend and wife. And also, like, what is that? Uh, there shouldn't be. Uh, uh, just some clarification. Are you asking on both ends? What do women expect from their husbands? What do men expect from their wives? Yes. Yes. Let me go first. Um... My expectation is for you to be yourself and do as much as you can to better us and get us to a better position than we were yesterday. Are these expectations different, different to when you were dating? Mm, you see, that, that's what I'm saying. For me, the expectations are not different. They are the same. If I expect sex three times a day, when we are dating, I'm going to expect sex three times a day when we are married. Okay. Yes. And right now, I'm, well, personally, I'm in a point where I'm like, if I am dating somebody, they are not there to uh, do things for me. They're only there to enhance or better me or get us, both of us, in a better state or in a better position than we were so it's not about what they can do for me because everything that they can do for me i can do for myself okay uh noma marx should the roles be different once we get married or should we just be going about our business Erica, do you want to go first so for me i feel like how you began your relationship as a girlfriend 
boyfriend dating should be the same in terms of you want a partner, you want a friend. It should be a natural progression into your marriage state. I don't think that you should withhold certain things when you're in a dating phase and then only give your ben- the benefits of you and like be yourself when you're in marriage. I feel like you should be that person into marriage. Obviously, people grow and change, but that should happen naturally. It shouldn't be something that you're intentionally holding back. Yes. Okay. Talking about growing and changing, I think the second part of the question was that, just that, like Agreed. women, women uh, sexual peak is at a different age to men. So I get to 40 and I'm just ravenous, you know? What I would say at that point. Yeah. What I would say at that point is let's go to the chemist. Let's go to that. <laughs> chemist. <laughs> what? Let's go to the chemist. And Jabs get it. So, yeah. So the little blue pill. Well. Thank you, Marisa. <laughs> yeah, but there are men who feel pride about that, that won't be keen on, on taking the pill. I don't know, I think. But anyway. But when my dick doesn't want to stand anymore, it doesn't want to stand. And age will get it to that point. So true. let's not... Beat around the bush and say, ah, no, this, ah, no. You don't I know it's active anymore. No, it's been nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. It just has to do with age. I've reached my peak, and mm-hmm. now I need help. Got you, Noms. You Fortunately, to- your sexiness won't be able to help at this time. Got you, Noms. Okay. Some of the differences in sexual compatibility that needs to be taken into consideration is the result of creating a child, right? Yeah. So there are certain things that, and especially within a context of whether we are married or we are cohabiting and the relationship dynamic then changes to if I'm having to sit down, breastfeed and do all of these things and still go to work and come back cook and do all of the other things regardless of how you may agree who takes out the trash who fills out the cars or whatever else but if there is a party within that normally the party that has carried the child is depleted in terms of energy that can contribute to that right it can contribute to the physical where the man is kind of going i'm running on the sexiness fuel and it's currently not there can we chill then there's that some of the things that are then different within that, right? But then the question would still become within the thing when I sense as your partner that, oh, honey is just taking a little bit of a dip. How do I try and help to get you to a point where we both are nurturing a sense of desiring each other continuously, regardless of what's happening around us? And it's within a state where both of us are actually, you know, well-rested and we can benefit from it. And it's not just another person doing certain things begrudgingly as well. Or another going, I'm not even getting enough of this, so why did I get married? So again, (laughs) communication. I see what you did there. Threw in a movie title. Um, Jabs, you had a thought about the expectations and the roles? Yeah. um... The expectations for me from I love you, you're my girlfriend, and I'm committed to you, to you're my wife, the expectations are exactly the same. They're exactly the same. We're in a partnership. We do our best to make each other happy. We're, and, and I think this is not even uh, specific to marriage, but the older our relationship gets, we should be we should be uh, uh, deeper into our friendship. Yes, and deeper organically. Into each other. We should yes. grow. We should go. We should grow deeper into our friendship because I'm spending. Listen, sexiness, passion, butterflies, all that stuff goes away pretty fast. In 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 the in in when when you look at the arc of a lifetime, all of that stuff is literally nanoseconds when you look at the arc of a lifetime yeah so if you and me are not best friends what are we doing what are we doing 
We need to talk about nonsense the whole day and entertain each other and be able also to be silent with each other and that's fine. Those are my expectations that the more time I spend with you, the closer our friendship becomes. Mm -hmm. And then where sex is concerned, I like my sex. You knew that about me when I was just your boyfriend. I like my sex. And also, but, but on the flip side, but, but it's wait, not like now. Wait. As, as your wife, yes, you like your sex as a boyfriend. And then as your wife, can I get a break? <laughs> break from what? No, no, no. And let me continue. Let me continue. Like, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Wait. Also, wait, where's this idea? What does where's this idea coming from that? Where? Drive for sex. Sorry. Hey. General stress. With no, no, no. Right? But... but no, wait, I'm just, I'm wait, just saying. But wait, Norma, wait, I can't hear Jawula's question. Yeah? Let me get into that. Let me get into that, though. Let me get into that, though. I don't think a man who sits on the couch and watches his favorite TV show the moment he gets home expects you to, to bathe the kids, feed them, clean the house, cook. I don't think that man has any business expecting anything from you anyway. But... Speaking from my perspective, the kids are a shared responsibility. The clean house is a shared responsibility. Should be. Cooking is a basic life skill that every adult has. So I don't want to hear excuses. You and I, at 8 a.m. in the morning, you leave and go to work. I expect you to have a job and a career. I have a job and a career. We leave, you go to work, I leave, I go to work. We're both working for this family that we're building. So I don't expect there to be this excuse, ah, I mean, I'm so tired, whatever, whatever. And also, it, 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 women need to unlearn this conditioning that their pussies are a reward for good behavior to a man. Sex oh, is not a reward to your husband or your boyfriend. It's a shared activity of two people who are willing participants. Who both get You are not rewarding them with it. sex. So there's also, there's also that. absolutely. Yes. So I think for me, right, the the view is always on even personally. What was the pre? What was the relationship before? What is it now? Where could it be? In terms of relating within a relationship, right? Some of the things I've stated, and it's no way a defense of myself, but it's with a cognizance of saying, these are some of the things that a lot of women go through where they are not considered as being, right? You have a whole generation of women where, granted, people can talk about, you know, sexual liberation and being free, doing whatever you want, whenever you want. But there is a whole pool of women that are also having to unlearn that your body belongs to you. Unlearning that just because you are married to a guy does not mean you should be forever a forever, I mean, a, what is it? A, 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 a Duracell ready to go bunny anytime. Of course. Yeah, and he doesn't have the right to access that his you body. You can reject the advances of a man, right? Because that hmm, I can't believe I'm gonna word it don't like it, but the toxic um learning around I paid Lobola for you, therefore mm. I can do X, Y, and Z. Right? And they are also within that a context of men who are also trying to find themselves and going, Oh, I was taught that I need to take out rubbish. Where somebody may marry a girl who a perfect example, a lady who married a guy. And just could not understand, like, what do you mean you can't, you don't cut grass and you don't know how to do an old change in a car. And that man <laughs> is a man like a single parent household where he grew up with his mother. And that was not the thing. Because first of all, he lived in a block of flats. There was no lawn to mow, right? And everything else was just taken care of. So for me, it's always important to look at the context that from which most of these things come from. And what are the things that they need to be unlearned so that you can find your own path? Mm. Well said. Another thing that we need to um, 
on your list of things that we need to unlearn is <laughs> what they teach us at the Lobola talks where they say things to the to the women and they say when you're mad ukwatala and aukwatila <laughs> like, like these which is, are, which is ridiculous it's just nonsense these which is things, ridiculous these things are your body belongs to you yeah this is this is one of the things that adds to women who add to the patriarchal um society and standards that we now must live by because my body belongs to this man who's who's married me what what is that that is absolute mm -hmm. nonsense um can we move on to the next question True. any more thoughts True. uh ricks I, I saw your hand okay cool so I want to talk about types of marriages. Why do people not talk about types of marriages? I, yeah, so monogamy versus consensual open relationships versus uh, arranged marriages. Why do people not talk about this when they want to get married? Why is it monogamy is the holy grail? And hmm. in monogamy, that contract that you speak of is the only one. And as soon as you bring up a prenup, hmm. it's a whole... So for, for me, for me, it's really simple. I can't do, uh, I can't do polygamy because if, if I love you, I can't imagine giving that much of myself to more than one person. And I'm not talking about being attracted to multiple people, yeah. but if I'm loving you and we're in a committed relationship, I want to breathe you in. I want to know everything about you. I'm spending my entire day from the time that I wake up to the time that I get home to you thinking about stupid little ways to make you happy because I know the little things that you like. I can't imagine doing that for more than one person. It's already very, it's energy consuming. It's emotionally involved. I can't imagine doing that for times two, times three, times four, times five people. And also people have their own, uh, uh, um, people have their own uh, weirdness and quirks and, and things that annoy you about them. I don't want to deal with five times the nonsense, you know? <laughs> I can learn my person's nonsense and, and develop a tolerance for it. Which, ah, you know, my woman, my woman does this and I can brush it off. Yeah. Now, if there's five, 10 different kinds of these things that I have to deal with, I can't, I can't. Okay. I, I, can just... There's only so much life. Can we just lower the number? It could just be two or three. Can ten? Oh. You have yo now. Oh. Yo. <laughs> even 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 two even two or three is too much, and it doesn't matter how much money I have because you hear a lot of men talking about. I can afford and, to. And yes, polygamy is. I can afford to, but I can't afford it in my spirit to be doing that for more than one person, to be honest with you. And, and of course fine. I can be attracted to be, to more than one person. Of course. But that fine. level of commitment for me, I'm, I'm a romantic, I'm a romantic, I'm a sucker for love. I wanna make you smile. I wanna make you giggle. It, it, I can't do that for more than one person. It's too much. Okay, uh, Riggs, your thoughts? Oh, lucky. So oh, I, yeah. sorry. sorry, who must no, go? Marika. Okay. okay. I was just saying, I, I, I agree fully with Jabs. Like, I am a romantic and I believe that it should be monogamy for me. Because in my spirit, that is, if I'm going to give all of myself to one person, I would expect that from that one person as well. Um, but then in going in terms of like an arranged marriage, yeah. for me, I don't know how I would, I'm sure that it works out in some societies. But personally, I want to get to know the person before I commit to spending the rest of my life with them. I want to know what, what my life is going to be like, or I want to experience things before I make the commitment. So arrange marriage right now. I do say right now because things could change, right? <laughs> arrange marriage right now is kind of something that is off the table. I, For you. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to. For, for me yeah okay cool um i so firstly i think for me well not necessarily for me generally the argument on types of relationships and why people don't necessarily talk about them hmm. is simply because i'm very precious about fidelity and what that looks like for people 
may not necessarily mean marry me, only me, and we are going to be in a monogamous relationship. I think for me, for that also has to do with the fact that you know where you stand with the person and you know how you reach your, your fill or how your cup is filled with them. As for the other types of um, marriages, arranged marriages actually have been something that have been a bit appealing to me personally. Same. Because I've questioned the way, yeah, and the way of dating and if my persona actually fits in with that. I think it will take a whole lot of time or maybe even possibly courage to list myself and actively go at it solely the digital way. And for me, the result of people having that instant access to the ability to connect with somebody. And when I say connect, I use that term very loosely is the tenacity or the endurance that then it takes to maintain a relationship is not there. Because as much as I can swipe right or swipe left, whichever way Tinder or, or whatever else works, mm -hmm. it is just as you know, how disposable that relationship could be. It is an indication of how impatient I may be not wanting to actually build and invest that time into getting to know you, understand who you are, where you come from, who makes you you, and then they lead me to a point where I will go, I want to get married with you or to you. Right? Moving on to the arranged marriage part. One is me going, possibly some of the approaches that I've had in dating have not been really that great. So would I benefit by having somebody who just knows me? So let's say, for example, my older sister says, okay, here is somebody that I think would be a good fit for you. Would I be open to going out and learning a little bit more about them? Yes. Maybe is there a better chance of success with an arranged marriage? Because in my mind, the agenda comes a little bit more prepackaged. Yeah. We are definitely meeting a person that wants to but, go but somewhere in life. But that's, Can I but that's matchmaking. That's not an arranged marriage. No, hold yes, on. Please, yes, please. But this is yeah. an arranged marriage. Yes. Right? So the fact that they take my interest in, in, into heart, right? Um, so for me, the, the, the offering for a, an arranged marriage is I would be matched up with somebody that can honestly start off on a foot of going I want to grow spiritually. I want to spend my time wanting or, or getting to know you better. And I'm happy to do it within an ambit of a marriage. And if that means we then can figure it out in terms of having children, but knowing that that person has a set agenda for themselves that is already similar to mine, that's been vetted by outside parties. Riggs. Mm. Well, yeah, so you know my stance on arranged marriage, but in terms of consensual open relationships, me being on the pro love side, yeah. um, I believe you got to do you. Okay, if you know that you can bring this much to the table, and you're gonna have to seek something else elsewhere, if you meet a partner that is on the same level as you, why not? What is so wrong with having an open relationship, an open marriage? Nothing. Absolutely. If you guys are about the both maturity nothing. levels, mm -hmm. you'll know exactly what you'll want. You'll know exactly how committed you guys are and you're comfortable with each other. Why not? Yeah. Lucky, mm -hmm. your thoughts on mm -hmm. open marriage versus monogamy versus um, arranged marriage? Uh, an open relationship sounds fun on paper, but there's more to it than just what we think there is to it. Because there's no way you can be in a relationship with somebody and be emotionally invested in somebody and still not have some sort of jealousy of them being with, possibly being with somebody else out there and possibly having more fun than they are having with you. And chances are they might not be having that much fun with that person. They might be enjoying something else. But to you, it's like, for that person to be with that person at this exact moment, it means 
there is something in me that I cannot provide. So it ends up being uh, a thing where it goes back to you questioning yourself. So for me, it's 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 mm. uh, open relationship is is a no. It's it's uh, I would like to experiment and do it, but I know that it's not gonna end well. Mm. Yeah, go. I think particularly with open relationships, for me, it is knowing yourself to a point so well that you know what it takes to actually keep your cup full and how much of that you're willing to then share with others. But I really do think that the honesty that needs to come upfront on that, I don't think you can go open relationship as the first step. First I think what? relationship. So like to try to get a place date. where yeah, no, like we can't date within a year and then you're telling me you want an open relationship. Mm. To me, also, it makes sense. What if you I meet feel, and you both want an open relationship? What how's that? Okay, so that's so a different me, I'm oh, gonna be oh, honest oh, and understand. say in how I'm in how I'm saying this, I'm saying it this is my personal view. I'm not wanting to project it on anybody else. Oh I goodness. honestly do that an open relationship can be the very first thing that you're going to go into. In my mind, an open relationship, that case for an open relationship is made to then go, we are lacking this, we are not happy in this, or we are wanting to add more well, you, in you our relationship. It's something you must transition into. It can't be something that... I I, I believe so. Okay, that's okay. That's interesting. Cause yeah, I, I think so because the why of it, the case of why, then becomes something that it becomes the shared understanding amongst each other to then guard against the, you know, or not really to guard, but to manage the, the little things that come up with jealousy and the likes. But I really that feel that there is a relationship. Into okay. What? I'm saying that happens in monogamous relationships too. So, what do yeah, you mean? But remember, the remember that in the things that in, you have in, to in buy monogamous relationships. Oh, oh, yeah, remember that in monogamous relationships. Yes, it comes up, but it you can easily push it aside because you know that this person is there with you. This person is only looking at you, so it becomes. Then what do I have to know. be curious about if this person is only looking at me? Come again? Then what do I have to be jealous about if this person is only looking at me in a monogamous state? You, you, can be je- you can be jealous of that person maybe giving somebody else attention. It's, it's, to that person, it's, it's a simple, friendly gesture that they're doing, but to you, it becomes a, oh, wait, is there more to that or is there something I'm not seeing. So it's those kind of things when you're in a relationship that kind of triggers, uh, what's this, jealousy. But in relationships, the longer you stay together, the more you know each other, the more you get to a point where other external factors don't matter. It's only about me and you, what me and you do. Okay. If, uh, we wake up tomorrow and we are, yeah? Do you agree then with Norma that we should transition it's more sensible to yes. to an open yes. relationship. Okay, cool. Yes. Jabulo. Because to add to that. Sorry. Yes, great. Jabulo. Um, Five let minutes. me touch on the question. Just, this, let me just touch on the question you asked now. Do I agree with Norma? Absolutely not. It's either you are open to open relationships from jump or you're not. It's like a man. It's like a man uh, uh, getting into a relationship with you and then further down the line telling you, hey, I want to take a second wife when he's yeah. never mentioned it before. Yeah. I really don't think, I really personally don't think it's something you can transition to. It's either you, you have a predisposition for that and you discuss it upfront that, yo, I'm really interested in an open relationship. And then you can transition into it within the relationship, but it has to be something that both of you have a willingness for at the very beginning. And I also thought, Norma, that you, you overly romanticized arranged marriages. Um, they are still married. 
Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought so. Okay. Uh, but, but, but again, you know, we like different things. I, I disagree with arranged marriages just on principle. I, I would like to preserve my choice, whatever that choice means. Okay. Whether it destroys me or it builds me, I want to preserve my choice. Uh, so just on that principle alone, um, they could have a 99.9% success rate. And, and when people uh, uh, cite success rates of different types of marriages, what is a successful marriage? What is a successful relationship? Do we say a relationship has failed because it ended after two years, five years, 10 years? Do we say it's successful because it lasted 50 years or we died married? How happy were we? Miserable. What was the content of that relationship? So, so relationships can end. It doesn't mean that they were failures. Relationships can last till we both, till death does us apart. But is that successful? Were we happy? Um, so we have to deal with those notions as well because we have a tendency to gauge the success, the meaningfulness and the substance of a relationship based on time. And I don't think that's really... I, I don't, I, I really don't think it's that simple. Okay, I just want to disagree with you on your point that you either have a disposition to open relationships or you don't, or you can have the engagement upfront. Because I feel like you can meet and be monogamous and your changes as a couple or even individually at different times, you can get to a point where you both feel like, mm. like she said, you do want different things or you want more or, um, like he fills me at 60% and there are things that are like really, really want to give attention to and someone else can do that for me. And we have the discussion later in the relationship five years in and we both agree, cool, let's explore the option of an open relationship and that could work too. Mm, okay. See, the, the, I also disagree with you in Javulo because <laughs> you know, personally, I, 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 I'm in a position where I'm saying I am not into uh, open relationships. Right now. But imagine, right now, mm -hmm. but imagine a scenario where you've been with somebody for 20 years. You know this person inside and outside. You love mm -hmm. this person with mm -hmm. all, of, all of you, but there's just certain things that you just want to experience that mm -hmm. this person cannot give you. Ever. Then what do you do? You go out and cheat or do you sit down and say, Babe, uh, this is what happened. The, 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 the thing is, I, I remember your previous answer when this thing came up, when you said, and I thought it was so vulnerable and beautiful, and I completely agreed with it, Lucky, where, where, where you spoke about open relationships sound great on paper. And then you yes. went into the human emotions of jealousy and possessiveness and all of that. Yeah. Um, I totally agreed with that. But, but there's a notion that I'm picking up from a lot of uh, 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 your responses about, about open relationships, that it's a thing. And this is why I speak about it must be a, a thing that you are into. Because for me, we can't be exploring open relationships because you are tired of your partner. Alimony versus manimony. Should women be paying to maintain men? Should men be paying to maintain women after marriage? Nope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, the only payment yeah. that should change hands is child maintenance. Yes. Whether I'm the custodial parent as a man, whether she's the custodial parent as the woman, then children must be maintained. Must be maintained. But yeah. this thing of I must maintain your lifestyle, I've, I've become accustomed to this lifestyle when I was made to, you. Me, I think it's absolute garbage uh, on both sides. Yes. Now I, I've gotten you used to a different mm. lifestyle. Now go learn a new lifestyle away from me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Exactly. In the same way, because, because it's so ridiculous that, oh, you've gotten used to, you've gotten accustomed to the lifestyle that I provide for you. Okay. What if you were a housewife when we were married and I got accustomed to you cooking for me and cleaning my house? Yes. Now that we are divorced, you've intended. gotten me accustomed to that lifestyle. Come and clean and cook for me every day, regardless of the fact that we are divorced, because you got me used to that lifestyle. It's ridiculous. Yep. We are divorced. Let's go our separate it's ways. It's over. It's over. Any money that should be changing hands must be must be limited to child maintenance. Now, as far as 
Is the system biased towards women? Yes, we live in a patriarchal world and the judiciary is no different. It still views a woman as the primary caregiver of children. And of course, men, it's not like men have been, have been a, a shining examples of parenthood. But yes, the system, if you are a loving father who's nurturing, who's there for their children, they still just view you as, yeah, but you're a man. What do you know about taking care of children? Mm -hmm. and, and there's a default thing where, well, children belong with their mothers. And it's deeply problematic. Yes. Yes, a case must be assessed on its on its own merit, mm -hmm. and then a decision must be made based on what's best for the children at all times. Okay, cool. All right, those are my last two questions. I really, really, really appreciate your time and staying with me through the technical difficulties. Um, so, any any closing <laughs> thoughts on marriage and and what are we doing with this marriage concept today or you think we've covered everything? Any closing thoughts? You're you're happy with what you've shared so far? I'm saying marriage relationships should all be just about partnership, and if it can just be about that, then everybody will just be happy. Um, sorry, there's something that we spoke about earlier in Jabulo during our transition period, and we spoke about the only purpose for a marriage is for citizenship, and I don't think that's in any of our recordings. I'm hoping that it is, but we had spoken about what really is the purpose of marriage. And I was just like, honestly, except for the legal binding document, mm. if I'm moving to another country, um, because the business one wasn't a valid mm. reason for me, if we want to build an empire, because we can do that as yeah. business partners, you register yeah. a company together and you build a business or even as separate individuals as PTY, PTY, LTD, we come together, we, we do business together. Because when you go to the bank to apply for a business account, you put mm -hmm. both your names as partners. So I, I really don't see what the purpose of, of it is, except for legally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I think people will argue with is um, when you die as a, uh, as a partner, there are these benefits that you don't get um, upon death. And we've seen this in celebrity couples where double HP and the partner, double HP passed away, the partner struggled. Um, the family didn't recognize her. There was all this tension and whatever. Um, I don't know. Is it beneficial then to get yeah. married just in case this guy goes? Or is it a money thing again? What is, what is it? When, when you're dealing with society, yeah. then you do kind of need that security to say, if you pass away and we build this together, I can still get what is just a, a will. Thank you. A will and testimony can take care of that. There's another legal document that can take care of that, a will and testimony. Um, in closing, I'm happy with the diversity of opinions that have been shared, but I also think it's important to acknowledge that I personally believe in, in, in partnership and, and I think I've covered uh, what, what that means for me, mm -hmm. um, but people must also do what makes sense for them as a couple. As two people, when you get together, you must do what makes sense for the two of you, whatever that means. Mm. So you mustn't be pushed into thinking, I must do things this way because this is modern and progressive, or I must not do this because it's backward and patriarchal and, and repressive. You must do things that make sense for you as a couple, think that you can live with in your own home. Nobody's living your life for you. The two of you must be happy. And ultimately, that's all that matters. And I'm talking about relationships in general, not just marriage. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, guys, right. for your time. I can't wait to... Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yep, thank you. Thanks for jumping in, Lucky. Jobs, you were... Yeah, cool. All right, guys. Go be great. Go live your best lives. Cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs>